All right, let's dive deep into the world of George Michael. Whether you've been grooving since the Wham! days or just discovering his incredible voice, today we're going to explore his journey using his Wikipedia page as our guide. Get ready to uncover some hidden gems because trust me, even if you think you know George Michael, there's always more to discover. You got that right. What always strikes me is how his story is as much about navigating identity as it is about music. Oh, for sure. Like, right from the start, that name change from Giorgio's Kyriakos Panayatu to George Michael, that's a whole story in itself. Absolutely. It was a conscious decision, you know? Balancing his Greek Cypriot roots with, well, the desire to connect with a global audience. Especially back then, in the late 80s and early 90s, the music industry wasn't always the most welcoming. Yeah, it took guts to be a pop star with a name that wasn't, you know, considered mainstream. At the time. And that theme of control, wanting to shape his own story, it kind of runs through his whole career. Yeah. But let's rewind to the Wham! era for a minute. Now, for a lot of people, Wham! equals pure pop fun. You know, mm. wake me up before you go-go, those vibrant videos. But were they really just a bubblegum pop group? Oh, not a chance. Their impact was huge, global even, and they weren't afraid to shake things up. Think about their 1985 tour in China. They were the very first Western pop group to perform there. Oh, wow. It caused a total media frenzy. Hard to grasp the significance of that now, you know? It opened doors for so many others and used music to, well, bridge culture. I never thought about it like that. It's easy to forget how groundbreaking that was back then. Speaking of groundbreaking, I was looking at the charts and realized something I never knew. Last Christmas, you know, the ultimate Christmas song, was actually kept from the UK's number one spot by Band-Aid in 1984. Isn't that something? Sometimes those little chart details tell you so much about the music scene back then. I mean, it speaks to the power of those charity singles, the social awareness of the 80s, and the fact that even in Wham!, George Michael was using his platform for more than just pop stardom. That's a great point. And it makes his later activism and philanthropy even more powerful. Mm. But even while he was still with Wham!, his solo career exploded with Careless Whisper. That song was everywhere. Number one in 25 countries. Amazing, isn't it, how that song captured the world's attention. It kind of foreshadowed the, well, the complexities of his solo career. He was this incredibly gifted songwriter writing songs that touched millions. But he also wanted to be seen as more than just a pop heartthrob. He craved artistic control, and that led to some, well, some pretty big conflicts. Yeah, and those conflicts really came to a head with the Faith album. It was a massive success, those iconic visuals, the leather jacket, the stubble. He was redefining his image. But it was also a period of intense struggle for him, both personally and professionally. Right, Faith sold over 25 million copies, mm -hmm. but it led to that famous clash with Sony. George wanted his music, his lyrics, to be taken seriously. He was fighting for artistic freedom, and that wasn't always welcome in the music industry, which makes his next move even more fascinating. Listen Without Prejudice, Volume 1. Mm. Even the title is a statement. It is. He was challenging everyone, the industry, the media, maybe even the fans, to really listen, to go beyond the surface, you know, in that Freedom 90 video with the supermodels lip syncing instead of him. Oh, yeah, iconic. Powerful statement, yeah. right. Like he was saying, hey, I'm not just a pretty face. My music's got depth. Yeah, and for those who haven't seen it, you have these legendary supermodels, Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, all lip syncing his lyrics. It was like he was dismantling that whole male sex symbol image that had been you know, thrust upon him. Exactly, and then you have Mother's Pride, a song about, well, a soldier's mother, which took on this whole other meaning during the Gulf War. It's incredible how his music is so timeless and adaptable like that. But speaking of powerful moments, we can't forget his performance at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert. Chills every time I hear him sing, Somebody to Love. That performance is legendary for a reason. It showed off not just his vocal range, but his emotional depth too. And it wasn't just a random song choice. You know, George was a huge Queen fan growing up. You can just feel the passion, the connection to the music. It's like everything came full circle in that moment. It really did. It showed how deeply music had shaped him, even from a young age. Yeah, it's amazing how those early influences can stay with you and shape your whole career. And talking about evolution, his later albums, Older and Patience, had a different feel, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely. There's a real maturity there, reflections on life, love. You can even sense a certain peace in those albums. They got great reviews, you know, showed that George Michael was still pushing boundaries, even after all those years in the music biz. And we can't forget about his tours. His 25 live tour, celebrating 25 years in music, was a massive hit. 
It really was a testament to his resilience. You know, after all the personal struggles and legal battles, he came back strong, reminded everyone of his incredible talent and stage presence. It's interesting. He even tried his hand at acting for a bit with the show Eli Stone. Each episode was named after one of his songs. That's right. Shows how intertwined his music was with his life. And speaking of his life, we can't gloss over his personal journey. It was just as complex and fascinating as his music. Absolutely, and I think it's important to approach this part of his story with sensitivity. He was incredibly open about his sexuality, his relationships, which was groundbreaking at the time. Oh, it was, for sure. Remember, this was the late 90s, coming out as a major pop star, that was huge. He faced a lot of prejudice, discrimination. But his choice to live openly, pave the way for others, helped advance LGBTQ plus rights. He was a true trailblazer. Yeah. And his relationship with Anselmo Falepa and Anselmo's tragic death from AIDS, mm. it had a profound impact on George, both personally and in his music. Absolutely. And that leads us to Jesus to a Child. One of his most beautiful and heartbreaking songs. It's a deeply personal tribute to Anselmo. And it also speaks to the grief, the loss that the AIDS epidemic brought to so many. Yeah, it's a song that really stays with you. And, you know, he did find love and connection again with Kenny Goss, his long-term partner, and later with Fadi Fawaz. It's important to acknowledge those relationships, to see the full picture of his life. He was a man who loved deeply and wasn't afraid to show those emotions. And while we should acknowledge the legal troubles he faced, the drug-related offenses, it's crucial to remember he was very open about his struggles. Yeah. And he always took responsibility for his actions. He owned his mistakes, no doubt. And he used his platform to talk about mental health addiction, helped to destigmatize those issues for a lot of people. He was a complex individual, that's for sure. But there was also this immense generosity, compassion, especially in his philanthropy. His support for various causes, especially fighting HIV AIDS, was incredible. His work with Band Aid, Live Aid, and countless other charities, some publicly, some anonymously, it really speaks volumes about his character. He wasn't just singing about making the world a better place, he was out there doing it. Exactly, and that activism, it was there in his music too. You know, in songs that tackled political and social issues, he wasn't afraid to use his voice, speak out against injustice. He truly walked the walk. And even though he's gone, his impact continues. I mean, Last Christmas hitting number one after 36 years, that's not just about a catchy Christmas tune. It speaks to the enduring power of his music, his legacy. You're absolutely right. And the release of Freedom Uncut with his own reflections, insights into his creative process, it lets us connect with him on an even deeper level. It's like we're still learning from him, uncovering new layers of his artistry. And the film Last Christmas with that unreleased track on the soundtrack, This Is How We Want You To Get High, it introduced his music to a whole new generation. And let's not forget the expanded release of his older album just recently. It's climbing the charts. Seems like his music is more relevant than ever. It's incredible how it keeps resonating with people across generations. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the music, it's the message of authenticity, vulnerability, and using your platform for good that really comes through. Yeah, it's a pretty remarkable legacy when you think about it from those wham days to, well, to the soulful stuff later on. George Michael is so much more than just a pop star. He was a real artist, you know? Challenged conventions, pushed those boundaries, used his voice for what he believed in. That's what makes him so interesting, right? He was complex, sometimes even contradictory, but always captivating. Huge hits, yeah. but never afraid to experiment to evolve, to be vulnerable. Exactly, and that vulnerability, that willingness to share his struggles, his joys, it's what makes his music so relatable, so enduring, you know? He connected with people on a human level. That goes beyond just music genres and generations. So for all of you listening out there, what's the big takeaway from our George Michael deep dive? What sticks with you? The music, his activism, the courage to just be himself. There's so much there. There really is, and I think one of the most powerful parts of his story is how he handled the pressures of fame. You know, while staying true to his art, he wasn't afraid to fight for that creative control, even when it meant going against the whole music industry. That's a great point. He could have just stuck with being a pop star, stayed comfortable, but kept pushing, exploring. It takes a lot of guts, especially when you're already at the top. It does. It's something we can all learn from, you know, whether we're musicians or not. That idea of being true to yourself, following your passion, even when it's tough, that resonates with everyone. Totally. Now, before we wrap up, I want to leave you with something to think about. We talked about George Michael's love for Queen and that incredible Somebody to Love performance. What do you think drew him to their music? And what does his choice to cover that particular song 
tell us about his own journey, something to chew on while you listen to his music again or check out some documentaries? It's a great question, isn't it? Maybe it was Freddie Mercury's journey of self-discovery and, well, defiance that resonated with George Michael, or maybe it was the power, the theatricality of Queen's music, which he also embraced. Or maybe, just maybe it was a deep connection to the emotions, the storytelling in that song. There's no right answer, but it's those kinds of questions that keep us thinking, you know? engaging with music on a deeper level. That's what we hope you've gotten out of this deep dive. We've only scratched the surface, but hopefully we've piqued your interest to learn more. George Michael's music is a gift, and we encourage you to dive in, find the magic for yourselves. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the life and music of George Michael. Until next time, keep the music playing and keep those deep dives going.